Hey all, I'm going to go over a tutorial on creating a screw in Creo. The type of screw we're going to be creating is a hex cap screw. And it's the same one as this assignment that you have on Canvas. And all these characters denotes the type of screw, the hex cap screw we're creating. I'm going to go over what those mean first. So I'm going to be using the threaded fasteners wiki that's on Canvas to help you. 3 8 is 3 8 of an inch. That's, a t that's the uh, size of the hex cap screw. 16 denotes the amount of threads per inch. There's 16 threads per inch. UNC denotes the... Uh, UN stands for um, um, Unified National. And C stands for the series. And it is a core series, a Unified National Core Series. Core series fasteners are used for quick assembly or disassembly of cast iron, soft metals, and plastic, and are designated NC or UNC, Unified National Core Series. There is also fine series and extra fine series. Um, 3C denotes the class of fit. 3 is the class of fit. Class 3, a very high quality threaded fastener with close fit used for precision tools and for high stress and vibration applications. And finally C stands for the um, thread specification and it is a C stands for American National Thread Specification. It's using this thread layout. Okay, The one and one half inch is the length of the cylinder of the uh, screw itself. One and a half inches. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and begin creating this in Creo. I'm going to create a new part. I'm just for simplicity going to call it hex cap screw. Hex cap screw. Just for today. Okay. Create the file. We're going to start with the hex cap itself. I'm going to be using um, some tables to reference how to create this and the tables are on uh, canvas is the hex cap screws reference tables there's also high um, resolution files right there if you can't read these and we're going to be using the pen of 16 table and 14 table to create this so pen of 16 is the hex cap screws table and then the threaded the thread size and dimensions table so 3 eighths of an inch hex cap screw so I'm going to look at nominal size or basic product diameter and that's what we're going to base off, 3 8 inch. We're going to be working out of this row here. Okay. So we're going to start by making the hex cap itself. And it's a hexagon. And once we create the hexagon, we're going to need dimension F. F is the width across flats. The basic dimension for the width across, across flats for the 3 8 nominal size is 9 16 is the width across flat. So 9 16 is this distance. So we're going to start with that. I'll sketch on the front view. I'm going to go to palette, drop down a six sided hexagon. I'm just going to plop it there. That, and I'm going to move it to where I want to. I'm going to use the coincidence constraint. I'm going to coincidence the center of the hexagon to this axis and then finally to this axis so it's at the origin okay it puts in a dimension when you create the hexagon 62 it's not going to be that big again it's 9 16 is the uh, with the cross flats so I'm going to measure from this flat to this flat crap down dimension I'm saying I can't over dimension so I'm going to delete the 62 okay delete and I'm going to make that 9 divided by 16, 9 sixteenths. Real small. I'm going to zoom all the way in. There we go. Okay. Good. Okay. Now we can extrude. How much do we extrude the cap? I'm going to look back at my table. So looking at here, it might be hard to see. You might need to look at the full resolution, resolution uh, um, picture, but... H and J are similar dimensions, but J is going to the chamfer to the bottom edge of the hex cap. And then H is going from the top of the hex cap to the runout. And it's hard to see where the runout is, but the runout is this last column here. 
So for 3 eighths, the runout distance is 0 0.012. So ideally, what we want to do is take h and subtract the runout distance. So h is the height, 3 eighths. Should be 15 60 fourths, and we're subtracting the runout distance from 15 60 fourths. So I'm going to go back to here, Creo. I'm going to type in parentheses 15 60 fourths, okay, minus 0 0.012, which is the runout distance, and I get the size of the hex cap, which is 0 0.222. All right done I got my hex cap all right the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create the chamfered edges on the hex cap screw and looking at this table it says it has a radius of 15 for this angle so I'm gonna go ahead and sketch that in and it's gonna be important that I'm picking the uh, I'm picking a plane that goes to not a flat I'm gonna make it go to the top so I'm going to sketch on this top plane, and I want to be down here instead. I'll sketch over here. I'm going to put in my reference. Okay. And now I'm going to draw a triangle. normal dimension is this is what I want I'm changing that to 15 there it is uh, before I'm done I want to drop a center line in the center of this hex that way it revolves correctly okay. now click OK we're gonna revolve but not extrude we want to cut there we go. Click OK. All right, we got the top cap done. All right, next thing, the runout. The runout is a circle that goes all the way around, and the uh, runout, um, the extrusion is 0 0.012. I'm going to go to the bottom of my hex cap. I'm going to sketch on this face. I'm going to drop a circle in. And I may need to put a reference in first. There we go. I'm now going to extrude. And I am extruding 0 0.012. Done. All right, we're getting there. Now the cylinder of our screw. I'm going to sketch on this face here. I'm going to drop a circle in. Now, what's the diameter? Okay, I'm going back at our table. We want diameter of E. So, 3 eighths is the nominal. I'm going to E, which is body, di body diameter. And the maximum is 0.375, the minimum is 0 0.3690. So, now obviously, if you think about a hole and a screw, if let's say for all intents and purposes the hole of the that the screw is going to go in is three eighths of an inch exactly technically a screw that has a diameter of three eighths of an inch it's going to be a tight fit it needs to be slightly slightly less that's why they put this minimum and maximum it gives you a tolerance um, a distance in between the minimum and maximum just for all intents and purposes of this I'm just going to go ahead and go with the maximum of 0.375 because it's a happy number and this is just a tutorial. So, 3 eighths. Alright.
done. Now we're going to extrude. How far do we extrude this cylinder? Well, we're going to be extruded one and a half inches because the assignment is one and a half. Change this to 1.5. There we go. All right. Nearly there. Now it's time to create the thread. This is the tricky part. So I'm going to try to take my time here because even I will mess up from time to time. We're going to look off this thread size to, um, table to create our thread. Um, three eighths of an inch all the way down here. There's two. One is 16 threads per inch. The other is 24. We're creating 16. So now we have our majors and minors right here. But really all we need is that thread. 16 threads per inch. So going from this wiki page, we're going to create this thread to helical sweep down the shaft of the screw. So to do that, I need to find out how long I have to do that. Well, looking at the screw here, LT is the thread length for screws. If the screw is less than six inches long, we can use the, this column of measurements. If it's over six inches, six inches, we use this column of measurements. So three eighths, the whole screw is one and one and a half inch, so it's going to be less than six inches. So we're going to use the basic minimum here, and it is one inch long of thread. Okay, so we're going to start by doing that. So to do that, we're going to draw a reference line, and that is going to be on a sketch. And we will use what view? We're going to use this top view. So I'm going to sketch on this top view, and I want to create the distance of the sweep. So I'm going to just uh, plop in some references first. This edge and this edge. And now draw a line from here all the way here. And we want to set this distance to 1. Again, I'm setting it to 1 because of this measurement right here, 1. OK. Next thing we want to do is while this sketch is highlighted, I'm going to go to Model. And I want to go to Helical Sweep. This helical sweep is based off that sketch that we created. Okay? And we want to remove material. And then the axis is right here. Now we're going to go ahead and create a sketch on this screw. All the way down to here. All right, so here comes the fun part. We are going to be creating this. I really only need one of these pitches. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch it out. Here, it's going to look shape like this for all intents and purposes okay there's a couple other things we're going to need to do I'm going to drop in one more right here it's going to help guide me I'm going to go ahead and change those now. I'm going to change these lines to a uh, toggle for construction, toggle for construction, toggle for construction. That's going to help me. And I need this one construction as well. Okay. 
I get a solid figure. All right. All right. Now we got to draw this out and dimension it. So looking at this image here, um, D is going to be the average of the minor and major diameter. So the minor and major diameter for the uh, hex cap screw is going to be from the major is to the top of the screw all the way to the other end of the screw. So, and the minor is the inside down. So again, you can see here, major, top, top, minor is bottom to bottom. So draw that out. I'm going to dimension normal. This is the minor. And the minor, we got to find the distance. So major and minor, 3 eighths of an inch. We know that the minor diameter, for, so we have 16, so we're looking at this row here. The minor is. 0.2938 is the minor. The major is 0.375. Minor is 0.2938. So I'm going to change this to 0.2938. Okay. Next thing is going to be setting to the bottom thrust of the uh, thread. It's one eighth of an inch times by the pitch. Now what's the pitch? The pitch diameter of an imaginary cylinder is located equal to the major between the major and minor diameters. So the pitch itself is the distance between the corresponding points on adjacent thread forms measured parallel to the axis. The pitch is equal to the number one divided by the number of threads per inch. So we are doing 16 threads per inch. So 1 divided by 16. So this trough here is going to be 1 16th times by 1 8th. So again, 1 8th times by 1 16th. Drop measurement in here. 1 16th. Times by one eighth. All right, get point zero zero eight. So I'm going to do a couple things to make this easy. I'm going to use the constraint tool. I'm going to use the equal. I'm going to select the edge there that that we selected, and then this edge here. It's not selecting equal. Okay, I'll just type it out instead. One sixteenth times by one eighth. All right, thank you. Okay. Next we have to do the distance between the pitches, which is right here, the pitch. Should be 1 16th, here to here. So it's from this point to the midpoint of this line. I'm going to just draw in one more reference line for myself. I'm going to set it to construction. And now I'm going to And the pitch is 1 16th. There we go. We're getting there. Now we can do this base. Okay. So the base is going to be the same thing. It's the pitch. 1 16th. 1 divided by 16. And finally, this distance here. It'd be the same as that distance. So from here to the uh, there we go.
this measurement here is going to be half of the pitch. So it's going to be 1 16th divided by 2. There we go. And we look like we're fully constrained now. Now that we are fully constrained, we're going to go ahead and uh, finish our sweep cut. Lastly, change this pitch here to the same thing as the pitch that we have to set, which is 1 16th, and then we are done. And the thread is complete. Now that that's set, we can save our file, and we're all done.